Hello, and welcome to Your Next Mission, the podcast where we speak with former veterans about how they transitioned out of the military and into civilian life. We have a great episode in store for you today. We'll be speaking with Taylor Wilson, a former Force Recon Communication Marine. We'll find out how he made the transition into the tech sector, working with Salesforce as a systems administrator. And now, on to the show. I am here with Maurice Wilson. He is a retired Navy Master Chief Petty Officer with 25 years of service. Maurice is the President and Executive Director of the National Veterans Transition Services and Reboot, which is a nonprofit organization that he founded. I'm also here with Taylor Wilson, who is a former Force Recon Communication Marine and Disabled Veteran. He lives out here in San Diego with his wife and two pugs, their puppies, Bob and Boba. Taylor loves helping veterans and spouses discover the resources and benefits they deserve, including VA disability compensation, finding high paying jobs in tech. He currently works in the Salesforce technology ecosystem as a system administrator. So he is in the tech field. He has his own YouTube channel called The Resourceful Vet. Welcome to our third podcast. Super happy to have you both. Definitely a pleasure to be back again. Pleasure being here. (laughs) Thanks, Taylor. As I've mentioned this statistics before, nearly two-thirds of new veterans say they face difficulty transitioning into civilian life. This podcast is all about helping veterans find their identity after service and really just offer some guidance on how to achieve that. We bring in amazing guests that tell their background, their history, and offer some tips, tricks, anything that can really help you all out as you transition and find your identity. So as we get into it, Taylor, I just want to ask you some questions and get a little bit of your history and walk us through your military career as well. Yeah, sounds great. So tell and, us a little uh, bit about you. Yeah, <laughs> your background. My name is Taylor Wilson. I'm originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma, born and raised. And if you know anything about the Midwest, football is a religion. And I say that because I grew up in a very competitive environment going to one of the top high school football teams in the nation and having the greatest high school football coach in Oklahoma State history. When I was about 14, my parents actually divorced. Basically, I had to grow up quick. And that's when I knew I wanted to go into the Marines and, you know, create a life. So that's kind of how it all started. (laughs) Great. That sounds like a a very disciplined childhood that you had. You had a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit, even early on. Yeah. So like I said, I started working for my grandfather when I was 14 and, you know, with my parents and their divorce and having to live with different friends and family and that sort of thing, it was pretty rough. But I realized early on that if I wanted to make anything in life, I was going to have to do it. And so I think that's what really had me start to think more entrepreneurial. Today, I reflect back a lot on what my grandfather's done and just pushing me to basically never stop. Never stop. Okay, great. And so tell us a little bit about your military career. Walk us through that. What got you interested in being a Marine? So when I was in high school, I actually was deciding in between becoming a Navy SEAL or going Marines. But I have to say, you know, one thing for sure, those dress blues stand out. But I just, I felt like Marines really called to me. So I ended up joining the Marine Corps, going abroad. Lived in Okinawa, Japan for two years. I served in a number of roles. My primary job was a field radar operator. And then I was also a military police for some time. And my last command, I ended up going to force recon and being a communications team leader. And that was one of the hardest, but most growth experiences that I've ever gone through in my life. And, you know, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And so when did you leave the the service? So I ended up leaving the military in 2016. And at the time, I was deciding whether I was going to go back to Oklahoma or if I was going to stay in San Diego. But between the beaches, the weather, and now my wife, I was sold. So I ended up staying. Well, tell us a little bit about your transition into civilian life. What was that like? And were you prepared for it at all? First off, I'll say that it was it was definitely scary in the sense that being in the military, you're kind of groomed with this checklist of this is what you do and this is how you do it. Go execute. It's kind of like, you know, when you graduate high school, you're just, it's like, okay, what's next? You know, and if you don't have a a goal or vision or know necessarily what you want to do, you might feel kind of lost. 
what I ended up doing was I went through TRS, Transition Readiness Seminar. Some people refer to it as TAPS, but it's what they call it, TRS. And so I ended up going through that twice because that was one of the best things I could have done. For anybody listening out there, if you know anything about TAPS or TRS, it's just a fire hose of information. Here's a resume. Here's a LinkedIn. Here's the VA on and on and on. And it's just kind of in one ear and out the other. And for a lot of people, from what I experienced, it was just kind of a check in the box to, you know, check out, you aren't really absorbing the information, you're just going through the motions. So for me, going through that first time, I still had a lot of questions and things that I wasn't sure about. That's what really had me exposed to understanding more about these resources and benefits available for veterans and how I could basically take advantage of that. And utilize that to my benefit. Transitioning to civilian life, it was definitely scary. And the other thing too was one of my best friends that was in the Marines with me, he ended up taking his own life and that was really hard. And a lot of that was due to his service-connected disability. There's a lot of veterans out there that just don't know about these resources and benefits. And knowing that can save a life. And so that's what really had me thinking about, okay, well, What are the resources I can use that can really help me succeed as a civilian? Yeah, definitely. And Maurice, you live and breathe this every day as far as helping veterans transition out. Is Taylor's story very similar to what you hear from veterans today? I know that Taylor was getting out of 2016, but is this what's happening in 2021 as well? For the most part, yes, but there's always exceptions you know, as far as what each individual does with his or her own unique transition. And I really appreciated hearing Taylor's version of of how he went through it. In, In fact, earlier today, I was in another session where I was listening to Ray Admiral Mark Ballmer talk about his transition and what he did. So I've heard literally thousands of stories of how people transition. So I could say that when I look for the common denominator as far as who's been successful more so than others, it's when the individual takes personal responsibility for their transition and starts the planning, pretty much like what Taylor did. And, and he's right on, you know, with or spot on when it comes to the TRS slash TAP course. The government's doing all that it can to really help get that information to, to everyone. However, Sometimes you may feel like, and and as Taylor put it, it's like getting information with a fire hose where it may be a good idea to go through it twice and maybe in some cases three times because you'll hear more and more information as you begin to learn. If you look at the greatest challenges that veterans face getting out, what tops the chart is navigating benefits, programs, and services, as Taylor just mentioned. Another percent is about 55%. Big challenge for them is finding out what they want to do with. And and Taylor, so I'd love to hear how you made that pivot from what you were doing in the Marine Corps to what you're doing now. When did that switch turn on inside your head? Was it during the transition or was it after you got out that you made the discovery? Great question, Maurice. Thank you for that. When I was transitioning, I had already kind of set my mind on just taking actions, no matter how small or how big they were. So one of the first things I did was I enrolled in what's called MAST. It's a program you can take while you're still in, and they give you like English and math preparation for college. I knew I wanted to go ahead and use my GI Bill once I got out to go to school, have some money coming in. Because really, at the end of the day, one of the biggest goals that most veterans need and they face is that financial obstacle, because you're going from getting a consistent paycheck to now you don't have a consistent paycheck. And now you have to look for a job. Maybe it's something you've never done. What I ended up doing was I ended up taking a lot of college classes on base while I was in and then taking that mast. And then whenever I transitioned, I took TRS the last month before I got out. And then when I was on terminal leave, I asked the TRS people if I could come back and go through it again. And they said that was fine. So I went through it again. And then even after going through that a second time, I would stay after and I would talk to the VA reps and I would just sign up for any and every different little thing I could just to find out what is this monster of a beast VA? You know, what, what is this VA disability and what is this GI bill? And 
there's more to it than just a headline or what they tell you within the fine print. And I wanted to understand that because I was like, wait, you're telling me I can get paid to go to school? How does that work? I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any gray area or anything I didn't understand. Although there's always gray area with these things. I didn't have a place. And so I had to figure out quick, you know, what am I going to do? And what are the actions I can take financially to set myself up for success? So I ended up transitioning out June, started my terminal leave. So I had a couple of weeks of paychecks coming in and then enrolled in a local community college and was able to start attending classes a month later. And then my GI Bill money was able to kick in. And then I had a part-time job. I got all those actions, plus going to the VA and and enrolling in the services through the VA and getting healthcare and getting, you know, seen for my service-connected disabilities, that all really helped me succeed. I just lost one of my best friends and I've, I've lost several others throughout the year, years, but I knew that if I was going to do this, there was more to it than going back to my mom's couch. I wanted to make sure I was set up for success and, and that's what really had me motivating and, and doing this right was taking action and, and having accountability for myself because no one else was going to hold my hand through this. Looking for your next mission in tech? Take our Find Your Next Mission quiz. We match your interest and affinities with our knowledge of the tech sector to identify which tech career is the right fit for you. So maybe you should go into something like cybersecurity, or maybe you're more likely to enjoy the business intelligence field or even software development. Wherever your tech interests lie, go to ccsla.com slash vets to take the personalized quiz and start finding your next mission today. Well, well that's, that's spot on. And, and, and one of the things that we have discovered in Reboot is that most of the people who are successful do exactly what you just said, which is takes responsibility for all aspects of your transition. Now, that's not to say that people aren't taking responsibility, but you really sort of went really uh, overboard, which is very important in, in that whole process. Let me ask you, did you get any personal coaching uh, aside from going through MAST and TAP TRS twice, did you have someone coaching you as well? Actually, my cousin, who's I consider a mentor of mine, he actually introduced me to a program called Landmark. And uh, if you don't know about Landmark, Landmark is focused in the personal and professional development. And in the military, especially the Marine Corps, they like to throw around these jargon words from like kill, good to go, all the different the lingos, depending on your branch of service. I also knew too, I wanted to, to expand my, my vocabulary and just be able to become more effective in my leadership skills and traits. And that's when I got introduced to Landmark. And so I went through what's called the Landmark Forum, did the Landmark Forum, then ended up doing several other courses, went through their leadership course, which they call the Introduction Leadership Program. Mentally, the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life, but if anyone's out there is listening, totally worth it, completely will transform you to a whole nother level, but ended up getting into Landmark and doing a lot of their curriculum just so I could continue to grow and develop and just can continue to expand my lexicon and, and, uh, and understanding and knowledge. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what you do know, it's about what you don't know that you don't know. And understanding what you don't know that you don't know is only going to help you expand. Absolutely. I think that's what really hinders a lot of people is whatever you don't know is what's really going to come back and, and bite you. And so learn all you can. So, so Taylor, just a quick question. Did you see combat by any chance? I wasn't actually in any combat myself. I was forward deployed overseas. I was over there when they were shooting rockets off in Korea and all that, but no direct combat. Let me ask you another question there. What was your biggest transition challenge? You seem to be a very forward-thinking, self-starter, highly motivated, creative, but as smart as we are, we all still are confronted with some, some obstacle, some challenge that we have to overcome. What was that big transition challenge for you to overcome? I'll just say this. I still, even today, I struggle with anxiety, depression, and there was addictions that I, I struggled with. And I would say at the time I wasn't seeking help and therapy and, and taking on those resources. 
And so at first it was hard because, you know, I had struggling for mental health and physical disabilities I, you know, I have and, and just addictions. And that was what really slowed me down as well too. just, again, understanding the whole VA disability process and just understanding, you know, how I could not just go and get a job, but really start to understand what career field I wanted to go into and landing a career. On that note, when did you decide that you found your fit? At what point during what we call, we call it the transition timeline. And for the listeners out there, the transition timeline to have a successful transition. I love the fact that Taylor mentioned that to have a successful transition. Typically you want to start two years before your separation date. And, and sort of follow the, there's a DOD, my transition timeline document that outlines all the steps and things that you need to do. Now, I'm going to ask Taylor <clears throat> if he would send me some of the things that he did, because we've just recently developed a managing your transition timeline app to help people manage the transition. And right now, the DOD uh, number of tasks is up to like 55. But what we want to do is, as we have conversations like this with people like Taylor, is add into this app some of the things that you did, like Landmark could be another option that people don't know about because what you said is so important. It's what you don't know. That's the greatest challenge for transition service members is that we just don't know what's out there. There's really no clear one place where you get it all where we're trying to, to overcome that. And, and so as you look at how long you've been out, when did you figure it out? You know, when did that light bulb click in your head that, oh, hey, here's what I want to do. And I'm going to go full bore, full steam ahead with it. When I got out of the military in 2016, I, I was a little lost in the sense that I was hanging around the wrong crowd of people and going to school and I wasn't making the the best decisions at the time, being young and just partying and just being wild. Once I got into Landmark, six months outside of the military and went through one of their leadership programs. And that's whenever the light bulb really started to turn on. And I started to really understand what the VA was, how does the process work? And that's whenever I was able to go to what's called a CMP exam and get seen for some of the issues I had been dealing with and get into the resources that were there for me. And that's really what I, I think helped me get the ground running as well too. I would say just on a personal note, when it comes to health and fitness, the gym, that's kind of my sanctuary. I'm going to the gym, doing landmark and continuing to seek services through the VA from disability to your GI bill. And like the, they have these other programs too. A mix of all that really helped me, but also too, most importantly, what I think a lot of veterans understand or don't understand is when they leave, they also leave that community being a fish out of water and having to transition and be in a new foreign territory or realm, so to speak. It's really trying to find that tribe. And, and for me, that was what I found through, through Landmark and going to school and the gym. Everyone f finds their, their own tribe their own way, but finding a community you can be a part of, I think is really crucial into helping you succeed. That's a perfect segue into my final questions and I'll pass it back over to Kajo. So with that in mind, that you need to have a tribe slash community because in the military, it is a tight knit group. You're part of a team. It's a big ecosystem where you get pretty much 360 degrees of support 24 seven. But when you walk out of the military, you're basically on your own. And so in addition to preparing yourself, learning not to make a misstep here and you're figuring a lot of things out, you also have to build your network. My last question for you is, with regards to ongoing, I want to call it uh, moral support or mental support or wellness support or team support, you know, where you go back to that well and you kind of get re-energized by your team and all of that. What's your secret to that? Do you have a community support group, whether it's Wounded Warrior Project or uh, several others out there, Team Red, White, and Blue, Mission Hire Me, or the mission continues? Who are you hanging out with? 
for any, anybody listening out there is there's a app called Veterati. They offer mentorship and whether you're a mentee or you want to be a mentor and Veterati is really known throughout the veteran community because that's what they allow. They give you access to a mentor. And so for myself, I'd been going through school and trying to figure out everything I could write, but at the same time, I still felt like I needed some guidance. And especially when it came to going into a career field, which later going into tech, like I did, I couldn't just try to figure it out and go through this blindly. And so that's whenever I discovered Veterati and ended up connecting with some of the top people in the world in their industries, just to name a few, David Nava, Chris Hoffman, and others. And Getting on the phone and just having a one hour phone call conversation with somebody really can make a difference. And for me, that's what really helped me to get to that next level. Because again, it's not about, you know, knowing everything. It's about knowing the right people. And Veterati yeah. gives you access to that. What you said is so important that you got to have your tribe, somebody or someone that you can go back to, to give you a different perspective that you can bounce some things off of and make sense of whether it's Veterati, there's also another group called American Corporate Partners, but you also have the Mission Continues, Rubicon Team, Red, White, and Blue, Wounded Warrior Project. I mean, that's just a few of some of these teams. There's one more that I'll mention that I'm aware of is the IAVA, which is the Iraq Afghanistan Veterans of America. It's great feedback, Taylor. I'm really proud of, of you and, and your approach to transition. Everyone can learn from you. So uh, kudos and job well done. Thanks, guys. Great. All great information. Taylor, I think you're listing off really great resources. And this is what the podcast is all about, offering resources to go to. We'll add them to our podcast links, lots of resources. We can probably have a podcast of a podcast just on all the various resources that are available and how to really tap into them and navigate. I think the common theme is that the resource is out there, um, but it is the personal responsibility to go seek them, find the tribe, find those connections, connect with people and maybe even get outside of your box a little bit to find the resources that are available and can guide you in that right direction and find that identity. And as we speak about identity, Taylor, I wanted to ask you about how you got into the tech sector. What drew you to the tech sector after being a Marine? And what about being in that digital economy is important to you? I ended up going to a uh, community college and then I went on to San Diego State. And at the time, I, I thought I wanted to go into the CIA or FBI or do something at, in a three letter. But then I realized that after a while, that life was cut out for me anymore. I wanted a family and I had certain other personal goals I wanted to accomplish. And so when I was at San Diego State, I applied and had the opportunity to become the uh, program coordinator for San Diego State's Veteran Entrepreneurship Program. If you've ever been a program coordinator, it can be a little challenging because for me, the case was, hey, we have a veteran program. By the way, we need you to figure out how to run it. Okay, go run it. And being at a a college with over 40,000 students, Out of those 40,000 plus students, I only had about a thousand students that were veterans. My job was to find veterans who were interested in starting their own business and getting them to enroll in our program, which wasn't very easy. It's like a shark tank. You come in, you pitch, and then if you make it, you come through our entrepreneurship boot camp, and then you go through that. And if you still make it, then you get funding and we set you up. And so doing all of that, I had to learn how to run and manage multiple social media websites. I had to learn how to do email marketing. I had to learn how to network. And so it was a lot of different random hats I had to wear and do. And being a millennial, we're kind of already raised in a tech savvy sense with our phones nowadays. Really thinking at the time too, I had this degree, which my kind of my philosophy is, and sorry if I offend anyone out there, but with the way things are going, unless you have a STEM degree, science, technology, engineering, math, employers, from what I've seen, they don't really care what you have because it doesn't really stand out. You can get tech certifications and those will stand out more, which I think they do because if you're going for a tech job and you're certified in that technical application, what is a general business degree going to do you any good versus a technical certification? So that really is what started my thinking. And then a friend of mine actually mentioned, hey, you should check out VetForce which is just known as Salesforce Military now. And I was like, VetForce? What is VetForce? And I knew I wanted to go into sales and 
you know, I wanted to have a career, but at the same time, I had this degree that didn't really do much for me. Cause when people ask me to my degree and I go international security conflict resolution, the first thing is people go, well, what is that? I say, well, it's a political science, economics, and warfare, which it helps you understand more about the world, but it doesn't really help you in a technical sense. And so that's when I realized, okay, well, I've exhausted all my GI bill. Now what? And so then that's when I got into Salesforce military, which if you're not familiar with Salesforce military, you get thousands of dollars of free training to set you up to go get a six figure plus job. And I knew that I didn't want to spend years and waste time trying to go from job to job. I wanted to get into something and I wanted to grow no matter how challenging it was. And so that's when tech really started to be my calling. I really thought about that as you were talking about the necessary skill sets that are needed to get into tech. And I think you always said that it's not necessarily about the degree unless it's STEM. And it's kind of like a, ooh, we, we say cringingly because we don't want to discard people from getting their degrees or, you know, negate them from getting their degrees. But I was seeing a statistic by the National Skills Coalition and that 52% of U.S. jobs require skill training beyond high school but not a four-year college degree. So a little bit more, more than half of jobs that are looking at that actual skill set, those types of certifications that are needed to be on the job. And I think that's more so in the technology sector than any other sector, because you have to have certain skill sets to be on a certain IT project. I think that is useful for those who are listening absolutely get your degrees and and education is highly important. I've been in the education sector 11 years and I am a big advocate for that. I've also worked for universities before, so I'm I'm very much a proponent of it. But we see more and more trends are leading into the, the certification realm where they outweigh the degree. So keep that in mind as you transition out and seeing what's out there, you know, getting into tech and whether you're super into tech or you want to get into tech sales or something like that. Do you find, Taylor, that having backgrounds in technology in the service, you absolutely have to have it in order to get a a job in the civilian world in the technology sector? I would say the only thing you need is ambition and persistence. Because at the end of the day, no matter what role you go into, especially in tech, chances are you're probably not going to know everything on day one. At the same time, there's a book out there. It's called The First 90 Days. And if you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend it. It basically explains in a skinny that your first 90 days on on a job, you're really just learning about your role. And so The hard part is really getting the role and getting that job. But once you get past that, as long as you have ambition, persistence, and you're willing to learn, then you'll succeed and you'll be fine. I think the most important thing really is just enhancing your communication skills because that translates to everything in life. Without communication, you know, that makes you or breaks you. So, you know, that's, that's really all you need is just, do you have heart or not? Yeah, absolutely. Like, do you see that end goal? Do you see that vision for yourself? So I think that that is definitely that driving force. Have you heard of any common challenges that you see veterans face when they're trying to enter the tech sector? The biggest challenge that I see is a lot of veterans, they just don't know where to start. And for me, that was kind of my case at first, because I knew I wanted to go into tech, but I wasn't sure But again, there's, there's all these different programs out there. And, you know, I highly recommend if you haven't heard of Salesforce, definitely check out Salesforce military. And, you know, the thing about Salesforce is what I love is it's kind of like they have that checklist, you know, a lot of vets, including myself, they just want a cookie cutter templated approach. Okay. Tell me what's step one. So what's step two, what's step three. And, you know, actually I have the Salesforce military 10 step guide. So if you're interested in, in learning about Salesforce, I can definitely send you a link on that. And then we also have it on the Resourceful Vet on my YouTube channel. I I think that the biggest thing is just understanding where to start and having these programs out there that these tech companies do. You know, I think Amazon Web Services as well, they have a a program and uh, there's a few others. But as, you know, we're going more and more online and virtual, 
more and more programs are being developed technically for veterans, which is great. So my advice is find a company or a technology or an application that you're interested in and research if they have a veteran program and start there. That's really good advice. And CCS is a tech organization. We know that a lot of Quality talent is already readily available in those who have transitioned from the armed forces. And so what we do is we use our 24 years of technical experience, our technical training experience as well, and we keep IT talent up to date and relevant in the workplace. So the things that are trending now, like cybersecurity, that's a pretty (laughs) hot topic. It's going to be ongoing. AI. Artificial intelligence is going to be ongoing as well. That's really looking into the future. We actually have a quiz, which is pretty neat, and we'll add it to the link, is which tech specialty is right for you. And it's a really neat quiz that you can kind of just answer a few questions and see where your focus could lie based on your previous experiences and the things that you're interested in to guide you and get you familiar with like, oh, maybe I want to get into project management. You know, I've done a little bit of a project management, leading teams before, maybe this is an area I want to go into. Or if you really love data or numbers, maybe a business analyst or a data engineer. So Taylor, in every episode, I'm going to ask three questions. What is your greatest fear? So my greatest fear is veterans being stagnant. And what I mean by that is eight out of 10 veterans are not receiving their rightful VA benefits. And there's roughly about 20 million veterans here in America today, which means 75% of those veterans don't have any VA benefits at all. And that's either from just not knowing about it or just not hearing anything about this. And, and, And it bothers me because you served, you deserve that. And the same goes with tech now, Salesforce alone, by 2022, there's over 4 million jobs that are going to be available within the Salesforce ecosystem. And a lot of those Salesforce jobs, you're making over six figures a year. And these companies, they want to hire vets because one, we already have a background and experience of professionalism, leadership. And two, it it helps the company just really grow. And so it bothers me when I hear veterans hear about these resources, not know about any of these resources and benefits, and they're, they're back living on their mother's couch or they're going through some tough stuff, but if they would have known about these resources and benefits available to them or been able to get a service-connected disability for their back or mental health issues and, and getting seen in therapy, I think that would really, really help. So I'd say that's my greatest fear. That's definitely a lot to take in and kind of help others out with providing that information as well. What is your biggest challenge right now? I'd say my biggest challenge is getting my message out to all veterans that need access to resources and benefits that they deserve, including VA disability and earning these high paying tech jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And in the theme of this podcast, what would you say is your next mission? My next mission would be to educate and help guide as many veterans as I can and military spouses and understanding and accessing the resources and benefits they deserve from their VA disability to education and understanding and learning and navigating the job market and landing jobs and careers in tech. Thanks, Taylor. You're a true advocate. So that's that's super awesome. That concludes our third episode of Your Next Mission. I want to thank Maurice and Taylor for your time and insights today. Taylor, I'd like to connect with you offline just to go over some of the notes that I captured during this discussion and and even talk about how we could solve some of the the questions that you have as far as the stagnation. How do we deal with that? What are some possible solutions as well as getting information out to individuals and helping guide folks? Those are some of the common challenges that we're looking at, which are systemic. What we want to do is put together a team of experts to begin to look at the enormity of the problem, the scope of it, and then come up with some systemic answers like, okay, so Taylor shouldn't be by himself. Maurice shouldn't be by himself, nor should anyone else out there be by themselves. Let's all bring our heads together and find a universal solution that could be implemented. Some local initiatives that are taking place across the country right now at uh, municipalities and cities 
to implement what we call Community Centers for Military and Veteran Reintegration, which is aimed at solving those challenges. I want to echo what Kadra said. Great interview, great passion, great responses. We're really proud of you and glad that you're part of the team. And thank you uh, as well for your service in Simplify. Hoorah. Well, I appreciate that, Maurice. It's, it's an honor. and I'd be more than honored to connect with you offline. And I just wanted to say one more thing, too, for the audience out there. Some advice I have for any of you transitioning vets that are looking to get into, into tech, there's what I call the information technology success triangle. It's really a ladder of three things. It comes down to experience, certifications, and personal brand. Taylor, where can we find more about you? Any veterans out there wanting to learn more about the resources and benefits they deserve, you can reach me at theresourcefulvet.com or my YouTube channel, The Resourceful Vet. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. And Maurice, where can our listeners find more about you as well? So to learn more about what we're doing, as well as the uh, Reboot Workshop, or what we call the Reboot Process, go to www.rebootworkshopvet. Thanks, everybody. We hope you enjoyed our talk with Taylor Wilson. We're really happy to have him on the show today. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel, The Resourceful Vet. It's a great place for veterans looking to learn more about the benefits and resources available to them. If you have a question for us or for one of our guests, please send us an email at veterans at ccsglobaltech.com. That's veterans at ccsglobaltech.com. We're always looking for more guests on the show. So if you have a story to tell that you think other veterans might find useful, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, best of luck on your next mission.